Hello, welcome. This is the um, uh, Premier Chess Winter Virtual Classes with the Youth Intermediate Week One. And we're going to be discussing Queen Sacrifice. So um, everybody, what, what, what okay, what, what is a Queen Sacrifice and why would a person do a Queen Sacrifice? What do you guys think? How would you define it and why would somebody do it? What do you think? Anybody? Just uh, if you have an idea, just say it out loud. Go ahead. Anybody? Okay, does anybody know what a queen sacrifice is? Wait, wait, you're on. Say again. It's when you're. You give away your queen. It's when you give away your queen, right? So, so why would somebody give away their queen? Why do you think? Any ideas? Just give me some ideas. Why would somebody give away their queen? Yeah. Then because the queen is a special piece. Say again. Why would they give away their queen? They can't give away their queen because. A queen is a special piece. It's a special piece. It's the most important piece. But when someone gives it away, it's usually it has to be for a really good reason, right? Really good reason. So, okay. So um, I, I'll give you a few reasons queen sacrifice might be done. First one is for checkmate, right? If you're going to do checkmate. Second one would be to increase material to uh, gather more material. And then you win. And then you eventually win. And then the third one could be for improving your position. Okay, so let's look at this position. So this is white to move. So what do you think is the best move for white here? Anybody have an idea? So so um, if you if you um, if you have an idea, raise your digital. Everybody knows how to raise their digital hand. Everybody knows how to do that. So yeah, raise your digital hand because it's easier for me to call on you that way. So raise your digital hand and uh, tell me what you think the best move is here. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Anybody? Yeah, Nicholas? So what do you think, Nicholas? What is the best move here? Um. Bishop D5. Bishop D5. Okay. Uh, okay. So Bishop D5 attacks the A8 rook. Um, all right. That's a good move. It can be easily, easily blocked with C6. Um, so we need a little bit stronger move than that. So remember the theme is queen sacrifice. So we're looking for ways these are all going to be using queen sacrifice. So what do you think is a way that we can uh, get a good position here using queen sacrifice? What do you guys think? Uh, Aman, yeah. Knight g5. Okay, knight g5. Okay, so if we go knight g5, it's true that the queen can be taken. But if knight g5 also, the queen can just take the knight, and now the bishop is protected, right? So basically, you just gave away a knight for nothing, right? So you're, you're close. You're close to the answer. What, what else? Anybody else? Any ideas? What do you guys think? Anybody? Come on. Yeah. Um, the other way, um, knight e5. Okay, knight takes e5. Yes, so this is the correct answer. Now, the key to this position is the fact that this bishop on g4 is unprotected, right? So that's the key because now let's say, so now of course the bishop can take the queen. Let's say that the bishop does not take the queen. Let's say he takes back the knight and then we can take the bishop and now white has just won a pawn, right? So the key to this is that the bishop is unprotected. Let's say, let's say the knight was on F6, right? Now it's protecting the bishop on G4. So now knight takes, knight takes uh, E5 doesn't work. 
because now if the knight if the pawn takes the knight we can't take the bishop because now we're going to lose our queen this way right so it doesn't work anymore so the fact that it's unprotected means uh, that this combination works so knight takes e5 bishop takes d1 what's the best move here what do you guys think Um, Alex, let me hear from Alex. What do Knight you think? To... Knight to f7. Okay, knight to f7. So knight f7 forks the queen and rook. Good. Um, but it's not strong enough. Not strong enough. We just sacrificed our, uh, we just sacrificed our, um, our queen. I mean, I mean, you will win this rook and then maybe he can, uh, Maybe you can bring the bishop back, you know, and it's not really, it doesn't really have a strong attack. You know what I mean? So we need something with a strong attack. We just gave up our knight, uh, our, our um, we gave up our queen. So we need a much stronger attack than knight takes f7. What do you guys think? Who else, who else had their hand raised? Nicholas, did you, did you have your hand raised? Um, can you go up uh, bishop f seven yeah so bishop takes f7 very strong right now we're delivering a check so now black has only one move which is what um yeah e7 king e7 now what do we do so uh, aman what do you think we do next move what do you think aman Um, I was raising my hand because I thought I I don't know the next move, but I was just raising my hand because I thought the only I knew the only move where Black could go. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so I mean, when there's only one move, you know, you don't have to raise your hand. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, here, uh, what do you think the best move is here in this position, uh, Nicholas? Yeah. Um, knight on e5 to c6. Okay, knight e5 to c6. What, you, what does everyone think? Good move? What do you all think? What do you guys think? Good move or bad move? Yeah, Aman, what do you think? Good move or bad move? I don't think that's good because um, the king can take the bishop. Um, okay, well, well, knight e5, knight c6, uh, not for that reason, because if we take if we take the bishop, now, now black loses his queen, right? So if there's another reason why knight c6 is not a good move. Anybody see it? Anybody see it? Aman, what do you think? Um, the other knight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so knight on b8 just takes the knight, right? So c6 is protected. He can't do knight c6. So for that reason, uh, knight c6 is not the best move. What's the best move here? What do you guys think? Best move here. Aman, yeah, what do you think? Is it your other knight, your knight on c3 to d5? Knight c3 to d5, and what's that? Uh, checkmate, right? Checkmate. Ah. Everybody see this checkmate? Everybody see that? This knight on d5 controls, um, attacks the king on e7, controls f6. Knight on e5 controls uh, d7 and protects the bishop on f7. Uh, bishop on f7 um, controls e8 and c and, and e6 and the pawn and the queen uh, and the bishop block the king's escape so this is checkmate so this is a very special type of checkmate um this is a this is a, a, a um it has a specific name anybody know the name name of this checkmate anybody know the name this is called yeah nicholas you know the name No? Okay. So this type of checkmate is called legal's mate. Legal's mate. So this is with these three minor pieces um, and uh, involving a queen sacrifice. Yeah. Uh, question? Anybody? No? Okay. Um, so first of all, actually, let me go back real quick. We're, we're going to talk about pins, for example. So, um, so the bishop is pinning the knight, right? So there's two different types of pins. Anybody know two different types of pins? The names? Anybody have an idea? Yep, I'm on. Uh, I think I can only remember one, but Which is what? Uh, like an absolute pin. Good. What's an absolute pin? Um, when 
a piece is pinning another piece to the king, so the piece can't move. It's against the rules of chess for it to move. Yeah, good. You'd be breaking the rules if you move uh, because you can never put yourself in check, right, in chess. So, so that's an absolute pin. The other type is called a relative pin. So this would be an example of a relative or an absolute pin. What do you think? What does everyone think? Uh, Alex, yeah. A relative pin? Definitely, relative pin, yeah. So we can move the knight. It's not against the rules. Most of the time, you don't want to move the knight because you don't want to lose your queen. But there's very special circumstances where uh, it would be good to do a queen sacrifice. And this is one of them, right? This is Legal's mate, right? Very nice mate. Okay, good. Good job. Let's go to the next one. Next position, white to move. What's the best move here for white? On the theme of queen sacrifice, what do you guys think? What do you guys think? Um, is it white or black to move? Oh, this is white to move. White to move. Anybody have any ideas? White to move, best move, using queen sacrifice. What do you think? Yeah, Nicholas. What do you think? Um, could you move your queen to c5? Queen c5. Okay, so this does sacrifice your queen, but uh, does not help your position because now you're going to lose uh without down a queen so not the correct queen sacrifice so what's another another way we can use queen sacrifice and improve our position what do you think Uh, you guys want a hint for this one? Yeah? Okay, so so remember I said the reason that we do queen sacrifices is what? Three reasons, remember? Remember what, what I said? Anybody? See if you can uh, tell me one reason. Maybe maybe it's easier if you guys, uh, why don't you guys all unmute yourself and just you can just um, shout it out if you if you know the answer. Maybe that's it's easier. Why don't you, all, all of you can un unmute yourselves. Checkmate. Checkmate is one. What's the other one? Better position. Say again? A better position. Okay, improve your position. And what's the third one? Material, right? Win material, right. Three reasons, right? You might want to do a queen sacrifice. So in this position, first thing we have to do when we examine a, a, a position, we do a few things. First thing we do is we examine, um, we examine the material. Who's winning materially in this position? Who's winning materially? Yeah, Alex. White. Is white winning materially? What do you guys think? Hugh, what do you think? Black. Black's winning materially. Yeah, he's he's got three extra pawns, right? Black has got three extra pawns. So, so black is winning materially. Now let's look at positionally. Who has more space? Who's winning on space? What do you think? White. Um, no, I think black is definitely winning on space. Like th this queen is much more menacing and threatening to the, to the white king. 
And these pawns are about ready to become new queens, right? So black is definitely winning on space. So white is losing, right? So if you're losing and maybe you don't really have a chance to win, but maybe you can do something to force a draw. So how do you force a draw in this position? How does white force a draw? Aman, what do you think? Um, queen F2, right? Queen F2. Everybody see that? Everybody see why? You understand why that works? Right? Well, so what happens if the, if the queen takes the, the queen? What happens? Um, it's a uh, draw. No, it's a stalemate. stalemate. Very good. Stalemate is a draw. Very good. Now, is there anything that black can do um, to save his queen and not capture the white queen? Is there anything that black can do? What do you think? No, because it's an absolute pin. It's an absolute pin, right. So can he move anywhere along this diagonal and save his queen? No. No, he can't protect his queen, right? Even B3 is attacked by the A5 pawn and the queen is lost. So black is forced to, to, uh, to capture on F2 and a stalemate is achieved and, and white has saved his lost position. He saved his lost position, right? Okay, okay. So, all right, let's go on to the next one. All right. Now, uh, Daniela's class that's just coming back. Um, 